it's really hard to follow such a case. Thank you so much, Dr. Adli. Uh, my name is Salih Shlash, I'm an interventional cardiologist from King Fahad Medical City. And today I'm gonna present a case of uh, showing just difficulty in the decision making and how, can, uh, how you could mm. easily be uh, distracted uh, during cases. Sorry, slides are not moving. There you go. So a 98-year-old lady who is uh, ambulatory, functional, independent. She can get from her uh, bed to the bathroom to the living room. She doesn't really leave the house. For the past two years, she's been struggling with accelerating shortness of breath that is just getting progressively worse. Uh, by the time she reached us, she was uh, in OHA 2 to 3. Her uh, echo showed uh, clear uh, severe AS with normal uh, functioning valves. Her AF was around 50%. She's average built with a height of 155 and uh, 60 kilos. This is her uh, CT scan, and I wanted to point your, or bring your attention to her uh, left main. So her left main is low at 8.5, and as we heard yesterday from Dr. Mohamed al that this is one of the parameters to kind of predict that this might be a problem. But if you look at her sinus of Valsalva height, and the diameter of her uh, sinuses, they're not particularly effaced, so they are somewhat generous, particularly for a uh, relatively small or average built lady. Uh, so it kind of made us anxious, but uh, not really enough to, um, to warrant doing anything. Uh, this is the sizing chart, so in here are the uh, patient numbers. So her diameter is 23, which puts her at a 26 millimeter valve, uh, or at the end of a 26 millimeter valve. Uh, her perimeter is 72.4, which puts her in the beginning of a 29 millimeter valve. Uh, her diameter and height of the sinus of Valsalva are appropriate for both, although a 29 will be really, really cramped, and considering that her left main is pretty low, and considering that she's 98 years old, we decided to go with a 26 millimeter valve. I also want to bring your attention to the oversizing percentage. So a 26 millimeter valve in this lady would have a 13% oversizing percentage, which is appropriate. Uh, those are cut images of her uh, annulus and her uh, sinuses, again, reinforcing the idea that really her sinuses are somewhat generous. Uh, her uh, left main uh, height, just showing an 8.5, the CT quality was not really adequate enough to measure the leaflet length. Um, her angiogram showed very normal arteries for a 98-year-old lady. She had mild osteal disease, which will become apparent on uh, next views. We decided to uh, leave the uh, coronary artery disease uh, for medical therapy. We decided that we did not want to intervene. So our plan was to uh, proceed with valvuloplasty, take an injection to just really assess her root give us reassurance, deploy a self-expanding valve, assess the left main, if it looks like it's well, uh, there's good flow in it, proceed and uh, not protect the left main. Uh, we had protection equipment uh, ready to go. Uh, so this is a pigtail from the right radial artery uh, in the non-coronary cusp, showing a cusp overlap view. And this is her uh, balloon valvuloplasty. That provided us with some sort of reassurance, although someone could argue that that might be false reassurance, since this is an undersized balloon, this is a 16 millimeter balloon. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure it actually provides reliable information that nothing is gonna happen or something is gonna happen. Okay. But we thought, at least we don't see something that makes us change our plan. We're gonna continue, we're gonna, we're gonna stick to our plan of deploying the self-expanding valve and seeing what happens. So we positioned the valve in a, the cusp overlap and we thought that was adequate depth 
a little bit high, but acceptable. We deployed it. It's about 90% deployed at this point. Still a little bit high, but acceptable in this view. Next step would be an LAO. So in an LAO, we can see the left main uh, with really a big gap. Uh, so we're less concerned about the left main. Uh, the height in here is appropriate. It's, it's a good relatively position, high, but uh, it's still within the annulus. It's probably minus one, minus two. So at this point, we are thinking, should we take it, should we not? And we're really focused on this left main. We decided to take it, and this is our next view. Now the patient has severe AI, she's really not unwell, and she's very hypotensive. Uh, and just want to remind you, 98-year-old lady with really poor reserve. At this point, we realized that we didn't actually pull the wire during the last uh, during the last view. So here, this wire is really pushing on the apex, and I think that pushed us. Also, if you look at the angle on the uh, delivery system, it's somewhat central. It's not really leaning towards this edge, but it's also not hugging the wall either. So it's kind of central, but we probably did not maintain enough pressure forward to counteract the tension in the system and to counteract this wire in the apex that is pushing us back. So at this point, uh, we uh, brought, we snared the, uh, uh, the valve just for stability, and we brought another device. And honestly, we tried to pull the, uh, we tried to pull the first valve up, but even with moderate amount of force, it just wouldn't come out. It's, I think it was just anchored by the leaflet. And at this point, we decided we're just going to keep it right where it is and deploy a second valve. So this is the second valve after deployment, no PVL, clearly marked by the first uh, valve, uh, it's in a good position. Flow is still good in the left main despite us. This is at 90% deployment. And this is after full release. You see the currents? And that's it. Thank you. Interesting. Any comments from the <coughs> panelists or audience? Dr. Saleh, thank you. It's a nice case. Do you think it's the first valve was involved, involved a, uh, a prosthesis, or uh, what do you think? I mean, the reason of uh, jumping of uh, the valve? Uh, I, I think it's just we failed to match the powers that push in and push out. So the wire pushes you out, the tension in the system pulls the device, the cardiac output put, pulls the device. Uh, the, uh, from the beginning, the position was really, really high. So I think when you're in a high position, you should uh, counteract it with, uh, with great force. You should pull the wire back. I think forgetting to pull the wire back is, is an issue. Uh, so I think that wire in the apex was playing a role. No, I think the system was under tension. And the moment you released it, the, the, the wire popped out. The position was good, actually, at the end, before you release it completely. But the system was under a lot of tension. Yes. You know, the recommendations when you have a borderline sizing, uh, if you go for balloon expandable, you should go for the upper side, uh, size. If you go for self-expandable, then you go to the smaller size. Uh, here you went to the smaller size, and uh, probably that's why, you know, uh, the valve bu uh, bobbed up. The second, uh, Freely, this happened. Uh, I will go for the second val valve as a balloon expandable, trying to reduce the amount of the new skirt, because this could pin your uh, other valve, you know, like a, a, a covered stent and obstruct your coronaries. Uh, especially, you have a small sinuses, you have a short left main. Uh, actually, I, personally, I will go with a, with a balloon expandable valve, and I will try to deploy it lower to avoid obstructing the left main. But then if you have a, a balloon expandable valve with a really high supraannular valve, you'll have two leaflets, so two functioning leaflets. Uh, yeah, this is true. 
Yeah, so the, I think, I think uh, that whenever you deal with an unbiased valve, you have to have an algorithm for a self-expanding versus a balloon expanding. For a self-expanding valve, always, as you did, try to pull the valve because you don't want a skirt in front of the coronary arteries, and you try to do that nicely. For me, the valve was deployed in a good position, so I, still I do not understand that the valve popped up because we did not pre-dilate the previous valve correctly or, uh, or more aggressively. Putting a balloon expandable valve, bit, I think it will be a bit tricky here with low lying lift mean. You might, it's a good thought, but you might, uh, the concern in the, 90, in the 92 is not the old leaflet overhang. You could have leaflet or overhang, and she could still survive, but the concern is the calories. Uh, but also, when you deliver your second uh, core valve uh, or ovulate valve, uh, the risk of coronary occlusion here is, again, this, I don't know, probably the, how would you do a commissure alignment in a very quick situation to ensure you have a nice flow? Great job securing the second valve, but ideally the message always is to pull or to put an effort to pull the previous valve. Dr. Mohammed, Saleh, I think I will agree with all the panelists. The position of the first valve was excellent, to be honest with you. Yes. The only difference, uh, I think you need another hand to hold with the snare that valve. Because whenever you go there with the new valve, it will push the first valve. But if you hold it nicely, you need somebody else to help, maybe with another route like radial, and make the life easy. Uh, because if you think about the future, you get two skirt now, and it's intentionally not on purpose, but, but again, I mean, it's, she's a very old lady. She's in the 80, but I think you did a good job. Thank you. I, I definitely agree. I, think, I don't think it's a positioning. I'm not sure how much of it is the force, but a great save at the end. Um, in retrospect, a 13% oversizing with not much of calcium might have not been sufficient. So I think you would have been fine with a 29. You already have a sinus of left, uh, the sinus of Valsalfa on the left is 30 something. Yes. So you would have been fine, I think, with a 29, um, more anchored at the annulus. Dr. Mohammed? Beautiful case, Asala. A lot of teaching. If you, if you go back to the, the first valve, the first valve position was beautiful. The problem is two things. Number one, you said that which you didn't pull the wire. Number two, a lot of tension in the system. Yes. And please, if you can go back to the initial view. And why I'm saying a lot, because the, the, the platform, the prosthesis in the middle of the aorta. So, and you see that the position in the left coronary sinus is lower, is higher than the right non-coronary sinus, and yet, it pops up the other way around. It pops to the non coronary sinus, becomes in the annulus. So that tells you that the whole system is really not in the greater curvature. So it's a lot of tension, and the wire is helping to push it back. That's why it flipped the other way. But I think two important things. The wire, you said it, and the tension. Try always to put the system on the greater curvature. I, I agree with Mohammed Atebi. I think Saleh is a good case, excellent case. And I think the position of the first valve was, was good. perfect. Mm. It's just the last moment where you need to release the tension and the push and pull things. That's a key. And, and I think it's just the distraction of the left main. We were just really yeah, you were worried about that the left main. main. We yeah. were not looking at yeah. the wire. We yeah. were not focused on the greater curvature and where is the delivery system. And I think, you know, having, you know, in all aviation. All the eyes were on the left main. Exactly. Yeah. In aviation, they have checklists. So if we had a checklist to say, are you on the greater curvature? Is your wire pulled back? We would probably have avoided this complication. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Nicely with the